All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to prep our board to be able to put the new uh, salvaged piece um, on the unit. So first thing we're going to do is uh, this is the area that we removed the board from, okay? Um, let me zoom in here so we can get a closer look of what we're doing. Put this in focus for you guys. And we give you guys a little bit more light. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to remove the solder off the back pads because I want them to be flat. I want them to be flat because I'm just going to be resting the uh, battery terminal back on there. And if I have solder on there now, it's not going to sit flat and flush. So I'm going to add solder to those contact pads later. Uh, but for now, we're going to remove them. How we're going to remove them is we're going to take our solder wick, as you can see here, and we are going to put flux on our solder wick. We're going to take our soldering iron and we are going to remove the solder from the pads. Okay. Sorry if my board's moving around. All right, I'm going to need a little bit more flux on my um, solder wick. I'll go ahead and do that. I've got just a tad bit on this contact pad, which will get in the way. All right, good enough. All right, now let me go ahead and clean that. Let me go ahead and clean this board. With a toothbrush. And alcohol. That nice and clean. All right. All right, now that we got that clean, what I want to do is I want to add so more solder to the anchor points. And the reason why I want to do that is because I can't get to these anchor points uh, with the component on the board. Uh, because it completely encloses them. The only area that it makes contact is the bottom and then it's surrounded by plastic. So I can't get my soldering iron in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add solder to it now and then I'm going to use my reflow station and, um, and heat it up to where it sinks down into uh, the contact pads. All right, so let me go ahead and add solder to that now. What I'm going to do is squirt a little bit of flux on those contact pads. I'm going to take my solder wire and my soldering iron and add solder to it. I'll grab my wire here. All right. All right, now that I got that built up, what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, move on to the next step. And if you just be patient with me, let me put some tape, and I'll show you here in a second what I'm doing once I get back underneath the microscope. What I have here is just a nice little trick. What I did is I applied tape on half of the component so it helps me align it and make it stationary. 
Um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and place that where they need to be the best that I can. All right? And then I'm going to go ahead and tape that down. So that way it's not moving on me when I'm using my hot air tool. All right, so we'll move on to the next step. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a little bit more flux in those areas. Okay. And then I'm going to use my hot air tool. Again, I'm going to use high heat because that's what I like to do. And it's, to me, it's a little bit less uh, risky. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is, is as it liquefies, I'm going to lightly tap it down so it sinks into those anchor points. All right, there it goes. All right, should be liquefied and soldered to the board now. What I'm gonna do is let that cool off for a little while. And then as you can see, I do have a little bit of um, melting of the plastic in the front. And that's okay, just as long as it's still flat. Um, it was very minute, uh, and that's okay. Uh, but it's very hard to get away from that, especially when you're applying 480 degrees Celsius to a piece of plastic. It's, uh, it can melt very easily. But we should still be okay. And it looks like it's pretty sturdy. And let me go ahead and remove my tape. Yeah, and just make sure when you guys are applying your heat um, to this, you know, I'm not brushed up right against it. I mean, for instance, I'm not this close, okay? I, I'm completely out of the microscope range, but I'm probably about an inch and a half away, okay? Um, so it looks like we got this soldered on, and I'm just going to kind of lightly tap it to make sure we do, and we do, all right? What I'm going to do is go ahead and clean it up. A little bit, get all that excess flux out of there. All right. I almost wish I had an uh, air compressor with me at the moment, and I just blow that right out of there, but it's okay. I just wanted to sh uh, show you guys a little bit better picture without the alcohol being in the way, but that's okay. So let's move on to the next step. Well, what I want to do now is I'm actually going to solder on the four contact pads in the back, if you can see that. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of flux on each pad. We always add flux every time we solder because that prevents the oxidation and gives us proper wetting. And let me zoom in here so I get a better look about at what I'm doing here. You know, I'm going to go ahead and change my tip. My tip looks like it's a little bit too big. So I'm going to go ahead and change my tip. Problem with using a smaller tip is it doesn't transfer the heat as well. Um, so it's a little bit harder to work with, but in some cases you have no choice. That's all you have to work with. All 
All right, let that iron heat up a little bit. What I'm going to do is add solder to my iron to make sure it is properly tinned, which it is. All right, let's try that again. The tip should fit in there a lot nicer now. Still needs to get a little bit hot. All right. Now this contact pad over here for some reason requires a lot of heat, which makes it very difficult to work with. But we got it. All right, let me go ahead and clean that up so I can show you guys. And I'll zoom it in as well, too, after I clean the excess flux off. that up a little bit. Go ahead and zoom in. All right, you guys can see the areas where I soldered. Okay. Um, we've got good wetting. It is somewhat of a volcano shape, which is good. It means we have proper wetting. Uh, it is all soldered together. So let's test this out to make sure that we didn't damage the um, contact pad, or I'm sorry, the uh, battery terminal as we refloat it to put it back on the board. So let's just go ahead and connect the battery to it, which we didn't because the battery is connected. You see that there. And that's how you successfully uh, salvage a part um, from another unit and put it back on uh, the unit that you're uh, replacing the part on. And thank you for tuning into Cellular Repair School. We'll see you in the next video.